Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. Okay, all right, welcome to today's class. Now, today we'll be looking at pattern, motif, and design motif patterns and design so this is one of the topic that is quite interesting in art and then i will appreciate if you have your pencil your pen or even your drawing book or your drawing material so just keep them close by because you might be using them I might give you an assignment and ask you to create some patterns to create some motifs or to create some designs but before we dive into this topic let me tell you some of the things you are going to learn before the end of this class are you with me? All right, let's go there. So my specific objective of this class is at the end of this topic, you should be able to explain the various forms of line and the basic functions of line. And number two thing you will know is to describe the, the, orig the origination and the meaning of what motif. Now you, you should also be able to know to state where motif are found. You will be able to describe the origination and the meaning of what repeat patterns. At the end of this class also, you will be able to describe the origin and the meaning of motif. You should also be able to state the motif, state where motifs are found and how they are generated. And then you should also be able to describe the origin and the meaning of repeat pattern. Finally, you will know how motifs are arranged to form each repeat pattern. Therefore, we will be learning all about what the repeat pattern. Now, for those of you that want to be a textile designer or you know the wallpaper designer or a graphics designer so this topic is key for you so i will advise you sit close and then follow me as we dive into the class all right so first of all what is a motif now a motif it is a unit of a design or a major theme in an artwork especially in pattern what making where it is repeated several times and at regular interval. Now, what do I mean by that? A motif is a single unit of a design. Like it is, it is the it is the idea in one block that is later repeated several times to make up what a whole design. Now, in such repetition, we call it what repeat pattern. Don't worry, as we fetch into the class, I will break it down so that you understand. But bear this at the back of your mind that a motif is a single unit of what of a design. It is just a single unit of a design. I'm going to show you a picture that will actually depict that. Now, look at the flower you're seeing there now. Now, this flower, if you divide it into two, if you look, there is a kind of a, an imaginary line splitted into two. Now, divide a part of that flower can be a motif. Or the whole can actually be what? A motif, depending on what you want to create. You understand? So, a part of the flower is a motif. Now, bringing, two of, bringing the both of them together makes it what a hole and now looking at it it looks like what a flower now you're looking at the flower as a whole it is what a motif so just bear that at the back of your mind that a motif is a single unit of a design all right now let's proceed now look at these other designs here we have here these are beautiful motifs now they all represent what a particular theme don't worry we're going to talk about the themes of designs and then we'll talk about what the motif in line with what it seems thereby telling you the different types of what motifs all right so now motifs can be formed from natural or artificial objects abstract geometric regular or irregular ones shape now these are the different types of motif now what are the types of motif motifs can be gotten in abstract in natural objects in artificial objects in geometric shapes 
regular shapes or what irregular what shapes now what do i mean by that a natural object when you hear the word natural nature what comes to mind it means the firmament the cloud the stars the, the sky the plants the fruits the flowers the trees those are natural objects animals you understand they are natural objects so you can carve out your motif from each and every one of what these natural objects now bear this at the back of your mind that also apart from the natural objects you also have motifs in what artificial objects now what are artificial objects artificial objects are man-made objects now these are objects like your cup the car you understand your 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 wall clock you know your cell phone they are beautiful motif designs you understand they are not they are artificial words objects and then we have the abstract objects or the abstract motifs these are irregular shapes since you can neither relate with or relate to, they are distorted what forms. For example, you can get a face of a human being and then you distort it to make it what an abstract image. So they fall under what the abstract. Why the geometrical what shapes? They are mathematical forms, mathematical shapes like the triangle, the square, the star, the cube, the rectangle. You know, to mention but what, but a few. Now these are what geometrical shape. Remember, these are the types of motif. Whenever I say mention the types of motif, now you can now say natural motif, artificial motif, abstract motif, geometric motif, irregular motifs, irregular shapes, or what regular shapes. All these are what the types of motif. All right. So now let's proceed. Now, like exactly what I'm trying to explain. If you watch, you see, you see the flower, the leaf form. It is regular. You know that this one has the shape of what an onion. Now this has the shape of what of a, a snail. You understand? And these other ones are what abstract kind of. They, they look like flower, but they're not really flower. And this is geometrical. Now if you look at this image, it looks like it's a beautiful image. It looks like a, a peacock. Is it a peacock? Yes, a peacock with different colors. But now this is what a beautiful motif. For a text, I imagine this on your shirt. How beautiful it will look. And you can pick one out of all these designs and then place it on your shirt and it will still come out very loud so this is exactly what motif is trying to say now it comes in different shapes natural man-made abstract irregular and geometric what shape they are the types of motifs all right so now let's talk about what pattern now what is pattern remember i told you motif is a single unit of a design now what is pattern now it is an arrangement of irregular and what repeated motif from nature or the environment in general in such a way that it's in such a way that it produces what reading to create color tone texture on a given what surface now pattern is the systematic arrangement of what motifs of design the systematic what arrangement of what motif of design don't worry we're going to discuss the different types of what patterns but for now just know that patterns is simply the systematic what arrangement of what motifs when you get this motif and you systematic arrange them, it becomes what? A pattern. So it can actually, now the end sense is to create texture, rhythm, color, tone, form in a given word composition. That is exactly what pattern is talking about. So whenever you hear the word patterning, it simply means a systematic word, arrangement of what? A thing. Now if you see the army, the soldiers, when they are marching, they form themselves in a pattern and they create, you know, some metrics when they are parading. Now that is known as what? It's a systematic arrangement. If the arrangement is being distorted, then it's now what? It's no longer a pattern. They can actually call it a style anyway, but in patterning, it is systematic. All right. So having said that, now look at this arrangement. Now if you, if you pick out one from this, let me zoom in so that you understand exactly what I'm trying to say. Now, if you look closely, you just see that it's, it's only a star. Now, but this star is systematically what arranged in such a pattern that it now creates this beautiful effect you're seeing on the screen. But the only motif they have there is just what? A single unit is just a star. Just one of that star. That's what you're seeing there. Just one. One of this. But it was systematically what arranged. And now you're seeing several, you're seeing several shapes, several forms, you're seeing different you know different build up that's exactly what what motive is talking about i'm going to tell you what kind of motive is this now is this all over repeat pattern is it half drop is it full drop is it um diamond repeat pattern all these patterns we're going to discuss is in the course of this study but for now just bear it at the back of your mind that pattern is simply the systematic what arrangement of what motive of a design to create color texture form shape tones in a what a given what space or composition 
Did you understand that? All right, thank you so very much. Now let's follow. I want you to follow me so that we can actually cover because this is a whole lot. So I want us to cover a lot in this so that we can actually, you know, dive in and do other things. All right, so now, now pattern makes and pattern making features very well in what textile design. Now, whenever you want to make patterns, you know, it features a whole lot in textile design. You know why? Because in textile is a very large space and you can't start creating different patterns on that space, on that end space, you get exhausted. So the essence of this pattern making is because of what textile, you know, all this large quantity fabrics, like your wallpaper, it is, imagine you, creating different designs on the wall. It is happening. So therefore, you just create a single motif, then arrange them systematically. You use it to cover a large space. That is exactly what pattern is talking about. And then it is used in making what? Wallpapers, wrapper, carpet, board design, certificate edges, to mention but a few. You understand? So that's the end sense of what? pattern making it features wear in textile design in wallpaper like i said in wrapper and carpet in board designs in border lines in border designs to mention what but a few so that is the entrance of what pattern making so whenever you ask what are the features of pattern making you can start telling them okay pattern making features on what textile design the features on uh, border designs features on wallpaper carpet e t c now this is a beautiful design of a wallpaper now you see if you look you just see this diamond kind of um, shape now the motif there is just the single one here but it's then repeated over and over and over and over again systematically that is why it created this design that you're seeing in front of you here so that is exactly how pattern designs are made now this is a fabric this is a, a kind of a clothes a school uniform per se if you see the, the design, you see the SCCI, eh? or the CSCI, or the CICS. You understand? No matter how you want to place the illustration. Now, this is just a perfect example of what, what we're trying to say. Now, the only motif there is just this, that is repeated several times. They now created these beautiful fabrics you're seeing. Are you with me? All right. So that is exactly what pattern making is talking about now the composition in the above item is most in, mo in sorry in most cases are based on what a particular theme of what motive like i told you let's go back and see that now like if you see you see the sleeve the major theme for this is what flora so that's why it's created in what the flora designs just one motif that is duplicated over and over again in this particular what in a single space that now created this intricate beautiful design you have here all right let's take a look at this other one now this is another beautiful wallpaper and now if you look so somebody here might think that this is you know different designs but it is just one it is just a single motif that created this while it's been what repeated over and over and over again now let's look at the definition of the word design. Now what is design? Now design is an arrangement of compose or a composition of some art elements, motifs and symbol that is that is organized into a unified piece of pattern. Let me go let me take that again. Design can simply be defined as the arrangement or composition of some art elements, motifs and symbol into a unified piece or pattern. Did you get that? So automatically, there is no way you cut out design from what pattern. As much as you're systematically arranging any motif, automatically you're forming what a design. So design, however, it is the arrangement or composition of some art elements, such as motifs, symbols, into a unified piece of what art. That is what design is. I hope you get that. Come on. Should I repeat myself again? Just... Take your time and understand it. That I said a design is an arrangement of a composition or arrangement or composition of some art elements, motifs, and symbols into a unified piece of pattern. So what do I mean by that? Now, what are the art elements? Art elements could be symbol, it could be line. You know, when we're talking about elements of art, we talk about line, form, shape, texture, color, and what? There are seven in number. By the time we start treating that, I will break them down shape form. 
we'll break that down in what in detail now look at this beautiful design you have here now if you watch it is the combination of lines you see the lines you see the shape the shape of an you see the eight shape there form you see the 3d kind of form it has on the screen and then the texture before we talk about what the color how many colors are you seeing there you're seeing two colors you see the white and the black so the element what the manipulation of what element of art creates what a design systematic arrangement of this element creates a design let's take a look at another image you see how beautiful and how intricate this design looks so this is exactly what we're talking about you make use of what elements of art to create interesting what designs so that is exactly what design is talking about now design could also mean a representation in drawing or other medium the idea an artist intends to execute it is a mental plan scheme purposefully what to arrive at a motivated what m it is a mental plan scheme it is not something you just do out of let me just let you sit down and then you plan it in order for you to achieve what the word motivated what m so depends on your topic or what you want to create now that will actually influence the kind of design you will make at the end so design is what a mental planned scheme purposefully what to arrive at a motivated m so that's another definition of design now i've given you about three definitions of design the first one i told us is the systematic what arrangement of what elements of art like pattern motifs you know to create the desired shape and i also told you it could mean the representation in drawing or the other in drawing or other medium the idea an artist intends to what to execute you understand when you draw the idea an artist intend to execute is known as what a design or however you can say it is the mental plan scheme purposefully to arrive at what a motivated m so these are the definitions of design now if you look at the image you have here you see them planning now this is a kind of um, a, maybe a teller trying to plan out what a suit or whatever he's trying to plan so first of all you take your time you plan you draw you cut and before you bring it together so this approach is known as what design to arrive at what the plant or the purposeful M. So get that and then you see this is a finished work of what of a design. Now this could be a fabric, it could be a wallpaper, it could be anything. So it is the making use of what the different elements of art, line, forms, shape, texture, color to create a design. Alright. Design has some elements which is well utilized. Now design has some elements which if well utilized will enhance the design making now they include line like i told you they include motifs they include form they include color they include texture and what space in a way pattern making is a design in exercise <laughs> you understand so when you're making a pattern you're simply what doing an exercise in what in designing so pattern making is a designing exercise. So bear this at the back of your mind. Now, mind you, I told you that design is usually done with the elements and the principles of art. You can't take away the elements and principles of art from design. They work hand in hand. So whenever you're making a pattern, just bear it at the back of your mind that you are ending up producing what? A total design. Now remember, motif is just a single unit of that design. Motif on its own can actually be regarded as a design anyway. But when it is now repeated, it becomes a full design. All right. So now let's continue. Now this is exactly what I'm trying to explain. Now for this, if you should cut this into two, you've gotten a motif. By the time you repeat it over and over again, it becomes what? A pattern. Same thing applies to this very beautiful image you're seeing here. As it is now at, on a whole, it is what? A motif. If you start repeating this design, over and over and over and over and over again this motif rather over and over again it forms a design all right so now let's look at pattern making let's look at pattern making now pattern making it is the art of creating design on paper or any other surface for various purposes now pattern should have a specific theme or motif now what am i trying to say here now is you cannot just say you're making a pattern 
using floral motif and then you now go about bringing in abstract motifs to match unless you call them minor motif yes at, sometimes it can actually go the combination of two different um, motifs to create a design it can actually work but sometimes you should stick to your topic to your team to avoid noise you understand to avoid recklessness okay let, let me just go back to this other image we used before i showed you before all right imagine you now using this image on top of this very one how then will it look like so therefore whenever you're doing anything you stick to your team that you don't make mistake because in YX they might ask you create a design using a particular motif so you, if you then use two different motifs and one design you failed so therefore you have to stick with the theme in order for you to achieve the needed or the desired result hope you're going you're with me all right now let's look at pattern making it is the art of creating like I told us it is the art of creating design on paper or any other surface for various purpose now pattern should have a specific theme or motif which i explained now let's look at pattern making or design patterns now you see all these things are different designs and different words that you can use for different words patterns there are different designs you can use for different patterns all right now there are different ways of putting designs together using various elements now they include let us look at the different ways you can put designs using different elements together now they include pattern making with what with lines the first one we're going to look at what is lines now different types of lines or different types or line of lines can be what combined effectively to form pattern in art now such lines include structural lines we have the vertical lines we have the oblique lines we have the horizontal lines we have the rhythmic lines to mention but a few now in the form of what scroll now, sorry, now in, 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 in some lines, for example, we have two major types of lines. We have the structural lines and then we have the rhythmic lines. Bear this at the back of your mind. A line is what's divided into two. By the time we start talking about line, we're going to break line down in bits so you understand exactly what line stands for. What is the definition of line? Remember, mind you, just for the benefit of doubt, line is the movement of what? Dot. It is the outstretched mark. When you stretch a mark, it becomes what? A line it is also what a moving dot so that forms line you understand so now we're going to talk about the different types of line which I told you have two major types of line the first one is what structural line which includes vertical line oblique line horizontal line wavy line zigzag line now the next type of line we have is what the rhythmic line now the rhythmic line include what this spiral line the loops line the wavy line you know the scroll the coil the curve lines to mention what but a few all this falls under what rhythmic line when you hear the word rhythm what does it e e imply imply movement you know play playfulness you know warm friendship relationship but if you talk about structure structure means straight direct you know very strict you know where you're going to you hit it straight that's why we talk about the vertical horizontal oblique you know zigzag the direct lines angular lines the direct lines they fall under what the structural lines all right so let's just take a look at what i'm trying to explain now line is a patch created by what a moving po point or a moving dot is a mark or object now there are many types of lines and it can be classified with in different ways we have the thick lines we have the thin lines you know these are the characteristics of lines then i told you we have two major types of line which is the structural lines and the rhythmic line under structural lines we have the horizontal line we have the vertical line we have the zigzag we have the diagonal line then under rhythmic line we have the coil we have the curve we have the spiral line etc now all these are the types of what line and they are often very what expressive lines are basic tools for what every artist so let's look at some of the lines we have there so you know them you see the straight lines see the vertical lines you see the horizontal lines horizontal lines they lie horizon vertical lines the north and your south pole is vertical line the wavy line those are spiral lines zigzag line structural lines scoop scopy lines coily lines dubbed lines we have radiating lines or graduated lines we have the zigzag we have the curved dotted lines dash you understand chevron we have the spera to mention but if you have the thin thick line we have the cross we have the hash 
to mention, and you have the broken lines. Now, a line width is sometimes called what? It's what thickness. The width of a line is sometimes called its thickness. Line are sometimes called what? Strokes, especially when what are referring to line in digital art. So when you are referring to lines in digital art, we call them what? Strokes. Even in paintings, if you're referring to line in paintings, we call them what? Strokes. So let me just go further to, to show you some examples of what line. Now, this is a perfect example of what? A geometric shape. You see this square box? Out of this square box, they created this circle-like uh, octag, you know, shape. So the same thing applies to this. This is a kind of a happy line. Falls under the rhythmic lines. You understand? They now created these shapes of circle and all that. So types of lines, like we explained before. The vertical line, the horizontal line, the zigzag line, the curvy line, the spiral line, the coily line. The shapes, the dots, the broken line, the diagonal line, the wavy line, and then the cross hatching. So all these are the types of lines. So in summary, we talked about the various forms of lines and the basic functions of what of line. We also discussed and described the origin and the meaning of the word motif. I told us the meaning of the word motif, what it means and what it stands for, and we also looked at how it is found. I told us motif can be found in nature, abstract geometric artificial etc we also describe the meaning of what repeat pattern so these and even more are the things we discuss in this section now, having said that let me try us in asking us some simple questions our first question i will ask us here now is define the word motif what do you understand by the word motif yes yes remember i told you a motif is a unit of a design put that at the back of your mind and don't forget and number two question I want to ask you is to state two types of motifs. What are the two types of motifs? I gave you about five different types of motifs. I told you we have the floral motif, which is the natural motif. We have the geometrical, we have the abstract, and then we have, you see I've mentioned about three, we have what? The artificial motifs. So now the final question I want to ask you is what? Define design. Define design. So just go back, if you can't design, go back to the study, listen to it again. So that you know how to define design. Now, I haven't said that. Thank you very much for sitting back. So let's dive into the exam guide and then see what we have there for today. All right. Straight on the exam guide, we are doing visual cultural creative arts. And then let's just get started random. I choose my topic, art and designs. And then let's dive into art and designs and then see some of the questions we'll ask. All right. So let's try question number six. Now, border creation is an essential part of design. Border creation is an essential part of design. A, banner design, billboard design, certificate design, poster design, and record jacket design. Border creation, to create border. So you should know that certificate has border. So it is for border design. So if you choose certificate, you are correct. Let's see another question that we can try our hands on. Now, question number 14. Let's click on question 14. Now, a unit of a design in pattern making, in pattern making is dash. A unit of a design in pattern making is, is dash. What is a unit of a design? A, is it idea? B, is it motif? C, is it plan? D, is it repeat? E, is it team? Remember, I told us that motif is a unit of what? Design. So, if you choose motif, which is B, you're so very Correct. So finally, let's try another question, and that will be all and how much you can take for today. Now, question number 18. Which of these is not a method related to what of printing? Coil method, interglue method, plonography, relief process, and seek screen. So which of this method is not related to printing? It's just a random question. Let me try your hands on it, if you can give it a try. So which of this is not a method of printing? Is it coil method? Is it interglue? Is it? Now it is what? Coil method. We don't do coiling and printing. This is coil method is for sculpture. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide. Now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now you can learn a particular topic of interest 
with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also have other features that make learning fun. Now, it is a must have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you and bye-bye.